In the 21 years that I have had the opportunity to work for Utah Community Action, I have watched poverty shift. Before, you would see poverty in pockets throughout the community. Now, regardless of where you are, there is poverty. During the pandemic, we saw a huge shift in terms of need and services, and we had received an influx of calls, in some instances up to 5,000 calls in a month, which for us was a huge volume. So the agency really had to pivot fairly quickly. Our CSBG funding is very flexible and allows us to really design programming to meet the ever-changing needs of our community. And so these resources being brought into our community really allowed us to stabilize housing. We created an intake call center. Um, we also extended our case management and housing. Life as a single mom with three kids has been difficult for myself. During the pandemic, my kids were going to school at home, and so my utilities went up, the grocery bills went up, being able to afford gas and doctor's visits, stress-wise as well, just being home all the time. Working full-time um, and still not being able to afford just your basic bills has been really stressful. As soon as I get paid, it's gone. Many of the clients that we have the opportunity to serve are not necessarily unemployed. It's that they have insufficient income. Prior to the pandemic, we were expending close to $60,000 to $70,000 a month in supporting individuals with rental assistance. And here, during the peak of the pandemic, we were expending as much as $3.9 million. I had the opportunity to get into my own home as a single mom, and I needed deposit and the first month's rent on short notice. You feel very vulnerable and knowing that you can't provide that for your own children on your own. Utah Community Action has been great to work with and their case managers that helped me with the assistance that I received have been extremely helpful. Every one of them treated me with absolute respect and made me feel I deserved the assistance. CSBG is a very important funding source because it allows agencies to really try new things. Utah Community Action's mediation program, it, it was a pilot that we tested because we realized that we were seeing a lot of folks that were receiving eviction notices, even though we had rental uh, assistance available. So the mediation program allowed us to have somebody that came in that understood the law and really advocate and provide remedies to clients. I work for a law office that represents the vast majority of landlords in Utah. When there's a situation where we have a client that needs to get the rent paid, they're saying, well, we're going to have to get this resident out because they can't pay it. My first thought is, can community action help? In 2021, the agency was able to serve over 750 households through our landlord-tenant mediation program and over 680 households, we were able to avoid eviction for those families, which is huge. When that program really took off and, and became an integral part of what we do, it changed how landlords view helping out residents. And to have some program that you can go to to help landlords want to continue to provide housing and provide more opportunities for people to have really good housing, it affects every aspect of life. Through CSBG funding, we were able to really put together the data needed to prove the value that the mediation program could have, that for a little cost, you can make a huge difference. And we were able to get a three-year grant from the state to expand our program, hire more mediators, and make it um, statewide. We can now help rural areas that would not necessarily have this service otherwise. I feel great in my new home where I know that my kids will never have to move again is an extremely peaceful feeling. 
When I think of homeless services, not only here in Utah, but homeless communities throughout the state, I would share that uh, the lessons that we've learned are really, one, it's not enough to be in the room. You need to be at the table, making decisions and engaging in conversations and stepping back and saying, how are we going to be a part of the solution? And really making sure, first and foremost, children and families are staying housed.